Welcome to the final episode of Scriabin's Atonality, where we explore sets that are exceptions to the prevalence of mystic and octatonic sets discussed throughout the series. As rule-oriented and systematic as Scriabin was, his use of these exceptional sets show that he wasn't completely limited to a few supersets in his writing, but instead that he was a harmonic genius that could effectively utilize some of the strangest sets imaginable. Many things about Scriabin's life are absurdly strange. One example is how the third atonal piece he ever wrote is based on harmony that is largely unique for his late era. Opus 59, number 2, marked Savage, Belligerent, uses sets from the harmonic minor scale. <laughs> This excerpt fits perfectly into the C-sharp harmonic minor scale. Although since most of it has F-sharp in the bass, we might think of this passage as using the fourth mode of the harmonic minor set 7.3b. What's interesting is that mystic and octatonic sets appear briefly in other sections, and the very end features the same B section motif we analyzed, but adapted to a mystic set moving to Scriabin's octatonic hexachord. I've only found one other piece by Scriabin that utilizes the harmonic set, and that's in my favorite motif of Sonata 8, the dyad motif at the start of theme 2. He also adapts this same motif to other sets as well. Opus 71 number 1 is one of his most dissonant works. In this piece we find a bizarre set called 7z17 that we might call a double cluster set as it contains two separate clusters of consecutive semitone intervals. Here's the opening phrase that lands on 7z17. The fact that 717 is one of the many strange chords in this piece makes it difficult to determine a single superset that ties all of the harmony together for this work. Scriabin's eighth sonata is nicknamed the Enigmatic Sonata. It's the final boss of Scriabin's atonality because of its complex use of novel sets. The enigma begins with the very first chord. This is a cluster set called 6Z44. It's like a C major chord with a major and minor third and a major and minor seventh. While the cluster sets of last episode were spaced out melodically, the cluster sets in this episode are played simultaneously as a chord. The voicing Scriabin uses to voice cluster chords is to voice the two consecutive semitones as major sevenths as opposed to half steps or minor ninths. This 644 set is used throughout the work using various textures and voicings. We also find this 644 set used briefly in the last piece we discussed in Opus 71 number 1. You might notice that that excerpt sounds very similar to the flight motif in Sonata 8. Sonata 8 is peculiar in that it uses many motifs that are most classic to Scriabin's style, but does so using strangely novel harmony. In this series, we've learned about how Scriabin relies on prominent sets in his atonal music such as mystic sets, octatonic sets, and larger sets that combine the two. He tends to transpose these sets at the level of a minor third, major third, and most often at the level of a tritone. Scriabin is very motif-oriented, and one of his most interesting compositional techniques is the ability to repeat the same motif altered to a closely related set to create contrast. 
The reason I've spent so much time analyzing Scriabin's atonality is because he pioneered a logical approach to atonal composing. Other atonal composers freely allowed myriads of dissonant sets to be used, or relied on rigid systems like twelve-tone serialism. Scriabin instead limited his harmonic language to a few sets and applied them in a way that aligns with their fundamental geometry, such as transposing octatonic chords a minor third away. This is why I see Scriabin's atonality as a guide for future composers to observe as a model of how the rest of the harmonic world can be explored outside the major scale. I apply some of Scriabin's compositional techniques in my own compositions, particularly my Symphony for Free Spirits. Most of what I know about Scriabin's atonality comes from my own analysis, and I'm always trying to expand my understanding of his work, so I would love for you all to share whatever insights you learn about Scriabin with me. Please join our discussions on my Discord server, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and send me some Bitcoin.